Hello and welcome once again to Cookstown 100 in Northern Ireland. Coming up, action from the Moto3 and lightweight classes. There's also classic machinery as well as superbike racing. And it's welcome back to Adam McLean. He missed most of 2019 following a big crash at Tandragee. Indeed, his last success on the roads was here at Cookstown 18 months ago. And once more, he's racing in the McAdoo colours. Another rider to look out for is Paul Jordan. This year, he's joined the Burroughs Engineering PK Racing Squad and has up-and-coming racer Mike Brown as his teammate. Irish road racing wouldn't be Irish road racing without Michael Sweeney. He's an ever-present, it seems, at every event. The familiar 65 will be on the Martin Jones Racing BMW and the R6 Yamaha, which has brought Sweeney the Irish Road Race 600cc Championship. King of the superbikes at Cookstown is Derek Shields. He's been the man to beat in recent years on the Orator circuit. He's a last minute addition to the entry list this weekend. And here's a reminder of him winning at Cookstown 18 months ago. At 2.1 miles, it's the shortest of the road race circuits in Northern Ireland, but always produces some superb action. There's a long start finish straight before the course weaves its way through the countryside. There are twists and turns, a jump and an off camber bend before a crossroads to the chequered flag. If you didn't catch the first programme from Cookstown, this is what you missed. If you did see it, then just enjoy these highlights once again. The flag about to wave as the 600 screamed down towards Gordon for the first time. It's McLean who looks like he's going to lead, and Paul Jordan just tucks in behind. Mike Brown looking to go past his teammates as they come down, but I think it's going to be fairly orderly. Oh, Michael Sweeney hopping and skipping and jumping, losing two positions at least. Jordan right in the pack, just making his way past Degnan. Oh, now then, Paul Jordan has just lost the position as Daryl Tweed goes through into second place. And more traffic as well. Paul Jordan will not be happy. Here comes Jordan. They're side by side going down towards Gordon. Paul Jordan wants that position back. It was a tenth of a second between them at the end of that lap. Oh, but Tweed's got the inside line. Can he turn in time? Oh, and he's done it. Adam McLean back in Irish road racing with a victory. He takes the checkered flag. Daryl Tweed with second and Paul Jordan in third position. Oh, and Paul Jordan, fastest lap of the race on that final lap. So, boy, was he trying. Very nice to get the first uh, race victory of the year, and also it's been uh, my first road race since my accident in Tandragee last year. So, um, yeah, really nice to get that one under the belt, and uh, another 600 went around here. And also, it was, it was nice to be able to stop uh, Winston and all my family are around the around the track watching from his home. So, yeah, special one today. Yeah, happy with that, and big thanks to all the team for a fantastic job and all our sponsors for for making it all possible. So, yeah, delighted. But here we go. Flag goes up, McLean responds superbly. So here comes the race leader, Adam McLean from his teammate Daryl Tweed, Michael Sweeney third, Neil Kernahan is back in fourth place. We're riding with Michael Sweeney, the two McAdoo bikes just up ahead of him. So into Gordon, McLean. Tweed will look to make up some ground on the brakes if he can. He's whole holding it, he slides the back, just grips in time. Oh, red flag's out. The red flag is out, so we've had two laps and we'll have to restart again. Tweedy though, all over the back of Daryl Tweedy. He's looking for the drive out of this turn here, down onto the long straight. This is his best opportunity of making a move and grabbing second place. Here we go, Michael Sweeney. He's had to go the long way around, you could say, but can he stop it in time and get ahead? Oh, my goodness, Daryl Tweed putting on the style. 
really leaving it late. Here comes Adam McClay, takes the victory, but who is going to take second place? It looks as if it will be Daryl Tweed, it is Daryl Tweed, only just a tenth of a second ahead of Michael Sweeney. And I missed a couple of apexes, but once we, once we get settled in, um, we're happy enough, so big thanks to the team and all the sponsors, and yeah. Coming up next, action from the Moto3 125 GP class, as well as the Senior Classics. Welcome back to Cookstown in Northern Ireland. Coming up, it's the Wii Bikes, the Moto3 125s. The machines taking up their grid positions then for the Moto3 Supersport 300 race. It's mainly Moto3 category, just a couple of Supersport 300 riders there in Group B. The man in pole position on the 125 is Paul Jordan. We're about to launch down the Orator circuit. Away they go. It's a cracking start from Paul Jordan. But Meyer, Chris Meyer from the row two is away. He's going to lead them into Gorton for the very first time, unless Paul Jordan's going to come with the move up the inside, is he? Perhaps it is Jordan. Paul Jordan leads, and then also Nigel Moore just into third place. So super tight into Gorton. They're on their way down to McAdoo. And despite being not the biggest field here at Cookstown today, this could be a little cork of this race. Oh, Jordan already suggesting he might be pulling away from the chasing pack. Nigel Law, Graham Kennedy, Chris Meyer, Stephen Smith. And that is who we're on board with. He's on one of the Moto3 machines. Group B coming into view. Supersport 300 riders, Irwin and Wolsey. to Mackney and it's looking tight for second place Chris Meyer after that fantastic start battling away with Nigel Moore for second place here they come it is Paul Jordan and gaps already opening on this opening lap this one though these two are fairly well stuck together Stephen Smith So we're coming down to complete lap one. And certainly Paul Jordan with a good lead. Oh, and a change of position. Chris Meyer goes through. On number 24, Graham Kennedy. So Paul Jordan, 2.9 seconds this time. So four tenths faster on that lap than Nigel Moore. And then the gap back to third place, Chris Meyer, 6.4, but he is still in that duel with Graham Kennedy. Seven tenths of a second between them at the end of lap two. Paul Jordan just seems to have roughly around a tenth of a second on between each turn on Nigel Moore. And here's that battle in the Supersport 300s, Irwin. Ahead of Wolsey. Stephen Smith gained a couple of tenths of a second on Graham Kennedy on that lap. He's still in fifth place. He's seven seconds ahead of Malcolm Love. Malcolm Love on bike 49. As we look at Stephen Smith on bike 20. You can see that little duel between the two riders Meyer and Kennedy just up ahead of him how he would love to be involved in this little battle that's the battle for third and fourth oh and a little twist of the throttle fourth Kennedy he tries to find the move on uh, Chris Meyer Stephen Smith's gaining ground as well so then to complete lap number three Across the line goes Paul Jordan. He'll be getting aboard, saying around three and a half seconds on Nigel Moore. Well, that's the gap at the end of this lap. He'll have got the previous lap, of course, as Jordan tips it into Gorton. But there's been a change for third place. 
It is indeed Kennedy who's gone through on Chris Meyer, who's dropped back to Stephen Smith. So the battle for third and fourth has become a battle for third, fourth and fifth. Kennedy almost 12 seconds down on Nigel Moore, but just eight tenths between him and Chris Meyer and six tenths between Meyer and Smith at the end of lap three. And these two still going for it in the Supersport 300 class. Irwin still has the advantage over RJ Woolsey. The Linton Irwin will cross the line just ahead of his Supersport 300 rival. Now, this is the man in sixth place, Malcolm Love. He was roughly 15 seconds down on the man in fifth place, Stephen Smith, at the end of lap three. So a big gap ahead of him. Now, Stephen Smith, having seen Chris Meyer being taken by Graham Kennedy, will be looking to do the same himself. Smith on the Honda 250 Moto 3 four-stroke machine, not the most powerful, still quick. He has a couple of 125s just ahead of him. Now, I would suggest that Nigel Moore has gained a little bit of ground on Paul Jordan. He certainly looks closer to him down into the end of the lap this time than he was before. So Jordan crosses the line. Oh, Jordan 140.8. And Nigel Moore goes 139.82. So he's taken a second off him on that lap. 3.1 the gap. Here's Chris Meyer and Stephen Smith, the battle for fourth place. End of lap five, still four tenths of a second between them. So Meyer's not losing any ground to Smith, and Smith's not gaining any ground on Meyer. Graham Kennedy still in third position. And the Super Sport 300 battle continues to rage on. We might just see a change, perhaps, at Gordon. I don't think he's close. Oh, he is on the brakes. Just leaves it. But can he turn in time? Here comes RJ Wolsey. RJ Wolsey goes through in the lead of that class. Only two machines in the, that category. Kennedy looks like he could have third place. And I would suggest that looking at these gaps on this final lap, that Chris Meyer... He was half a second ahead of Stephen Smith at the end of lap six, but that gap is certainly bigger now on this final lap. So here comes Paul Jordan. Nigel Moore has gained some more ground, but not enough to do anything about Paul Jordan taking the chequered flag and winning the Moto3 Supersport 300 race. Nigel Moore takes second place, and we should expect to see in third, Graham Kennedy. Kennedy still to cross the line. So the Supersport 300, it's victory for Linton Irwin. Just by two tenths of a second. But Paul Jordan takes the overall spoils in Moto3. Tricky conditions then for the Senior Classic. 500 up to 1,000 cc machines. Barry Davidson in pole position alongside him, Richard Ford. Andy Hornby completing row number one. Murray is a non-starter, missing from the middle of row two as the flag is raised, the way they go, it's a good start for Barry Davidson, Richard Ford with Andy Hornby, a newcomer alongside him, but just slotting back into third place. Down to Gorton they go. Visibility could be a little bit of an issue. Certainly not for Barry Davidson, not as much as it would be for the riders behind him. And Hornby finds himself back in fourth place now as they go into Gorton for the very first time. Away they go, the back of this little pack is uh, Roger Chen from Taiwan who makes the journey to Cookstown every year to take place, or take his place on the grid. We're riding with RJ Woolsey. So two waves of riders, number six is Woods, just leading from Shaw. The three is Brown, Monty Brown, 48 is Hawke. Oh, the rain really pelting down at Mackney. Bill Davison from Ford. Barry Davison on the Honda 500, Team Gimbert. Leading them from number 12, Richard Ford on the Norton 920, the Bob Jackson racing machine. Third place, Mark Johnson. He's on the Honda 500 for MJ Racing. And Andy Hornby, the newcomer. 
on the Triumph 750. Matthew Brown just finds himself behind Phil Shaw. Roger Woolsey, meanwhile, draws the back of the pack going through. So he's just alongside number 48, Gerald Hall, and goes through. It's racing members here at Cookstown supporting the racing. Barry Davidson increasing his lead out in front as the rain continues to come down. A good ride from Andy Hornby. Barry Davidson increasing his lead over Richard Ford. Bike 12, who's still in second place. Andy Hornby is third. Mark Johnson in fourth. RJ Woolsey. RJ Woolsey right down the order just ahead of Roger Chen on the leaderboard. You can see it is very, very tricky. But RJ Woolsey gingerly crosses the line. He's just inside the top ten. He's just being lapped by Barry Davidson. Barry Davidson with the fastest lap of the race. That was on lap three, 153.5. He's been in the 153s ever since. Andy Hornby in third place, having been in fourth. So four seconds, the gap between Davidson and Ford at the end of lap five. Another 13 seconds back to Hornby in third place. Barry Davidson on his way to yet another victory at the Orator Circuit at the Cookstown 100 Road Races in Northern Ireland. There is the man in second, and I would suggest he's pulled in maybe another couple of seconds on Ford on that lap. The Barry Davidson, just a couple of hundred yards away from the chequered flag. Richard Ford will finish in a very comfortable second position. But here's Barry Davidson, another victory. This time in the Senior Classic at Cookstown. So Barry Davidson, a race winner. Richard Ford will be in second. And all being well, Andy Hornby will cross the line in third. This is how they finish then. Mark Johnson in fourth. Wattie Brown at the second wave taking fifth. With Andy Hornby, Richard Ford and Barry Davidson who complete the podium. Still more action to come from the lightweights and senior support classes. Welcome back to Cookstown in Northern Ireland. Senior support on the way, but first it's the lightweights. So Neil Kernahan begins the lightweight Super Sport 250 GP Classic Era Super Mono. Race in pole position, plenty of classes, two waves of riders, conditions not the best. And we're away, so Neil Kernahan from Daryl Tweed. And a cracking start from Kernahan down towards Gordon. 1 2 2, Chris Meyer, double 7, Sean Wynn. And number 7, Dave Walsh. The fifth rider in this little group as they gingerly make their way around Gorton for the very first time. Second wave away. 36, Ryan Whitehall leading this little group, or is he? Looks as if he's about to be swallowed up. Kernahan from Tweed. And a gap back to Sean Wynn. And we're looking back from Neil Kernahan. As he exits Mackney, races up towards the jump. 88, Michael Cash, just ahead of Brian Lachlan, bike 42. So it will be Neil Kernahan, as expected, who crosses the line ahead of Daryl Tweed. Just wait for Daryl Tweed to come into view. 
So Neil Kernahan in the 140s, Daryl Tweed in the 142s. John Wynn still in third place. Stephen Tobin of the second wave of riders in fourth on the race leaderboard. And this is the man on the 250 who's leading. John Wynn just ahead of Stephen Tobin. The Tobin, a second wave rider. John Wynn in the first wave. The amended time between them. And that's Chris Myers' race run, unfortunately. Off into the paddock. Ooh, front wheel, maybe a little bit too high, perhaps, than Neil Kernahan was expecting. Earl Tweed just watching Kernahan disappear off into the distance. So Kernahan. The right hand, left hand flip. So here he comes. And there's one more lap to go for Neil Kernahan. He's got a good six, seven second lead over Daryl Tweed. Here is Tweed. We'll have to wait to see if Tobin is still in third place. He's in the second wave of riders, of course. Daryl Tweed knows he just has to keep this upright for a couple more miles and he will take a second place finish. Unless, of course, something untoward should happen to this man, Neil Kernahan. So, across the line. It is 164 Stephen Tobin and he is still in third place. Neil Kernahan can afford to take it just a little bit easier than he has done on the previous laps. Oh my goodness, that's Daryl Tweed down. And off he goes. So Daryl Tweed, I said, was in a comfortable second place. Well, Neil Kernahan will not be aware of what happened behind him. Just gets crossed up, perhaps a smooth bit of uh, tarmac. Off he goes, but back on his feet. And that's the end of the race very much for Daryl Tweed. So Neil Kernahan comes down to take the checkered flag at Cookstown. So 109, Neil Kernahan takes the win. We've had six laps. 142.4 is lap time. This time he's looking around wondering where Daryl Tweed is. And he'll find out shortly what's happened to his rival. So this is how it finishes with Stephen Tobin taking second place with Sean winning third. Ryan Whitehall having to settle for fourth, but it's Neil Kernahan, the race winner. A good size grid for the senior support A race. A good 20 or so riders lining up in three waves. Here they go. A good solid start from Vinnie Brennan. He leads from Paul Swords. 84, also away well, Liam Trainer, but keep an eye on number 12, Keelan Ryan up the inside. Oh, he swept them all. Gives Vinny Brennan a little bit of a shock. Second wave of riders away. Aaron Hughes, 32, leads them to Gorton for the first time. We're riding on board with 777, Sean Wynn. Looking to make up a position on the brakes, perhaps, maybe two. Vinnie Brennan does lead. He's got it from Paul Swords. Keelan Ryan has been shuffled back to third place. Ryan Whitehall is in fourth. Liam Trainer is in fifth. Vinnie Brennan, both wheels up in the air. From Paul Swords, Keelan Ryan still in third. But back with the second wave of riders. Sean Wynn through Mackney. One of the slower parts of the course. Then it's back on the power, up towards the jump. Very popular with fans. So the second wave go through, Aaron Hughes still leading that group. Has he broken into, though, the top six riders on the leaderboard?
it's Vinnie Brennan who crosses the line now ahead of Paul Swords. Keelan Ryan still in third place. Ryan Whitehall in fourth, is he? He could be in third. He's looking to go the long way around on Ryan, who just leaves it on the brakes just a little bit longer. Liam Trader back in fifth. A little bit wider around Gordon. Nakadu for the second time of asking. It's still Vinnie Brennan, but Paul Swords perhaps has gained a little bit of ground on the race leader. Keelan Ryan still very much in it in third place. Liam Trader will do well to stay with this little group of four. Again, Brennan, both wheels in the air. Of this leading five, he has to be the most spectacular over the jump. The sun comes out at Cookstown. And it's certainly shining on Vinnie Brennan right now. A good advantage to have after a couple of laps over Paul Swords. And we could be looking more at a battle for second place than a battle for first. Liam, uh, Keelan Ryan, sorry, and Ryan Whitehall. Both still very much in the picture. Liam Trainer doing his utmost to stay with them, but losing ground. Around Gordon they go. Another look over the shoulder from Keelan Ryan to see what's going on behind. This is what's going on in the second wave of riders. Aaron Hughes still leading this group. Also there, the likes of Anthony O'Carroll, Michael Garn. I would suggest that Vinnie Brennan's gap over Paul Swords is stretched, but only slightly. Sean Wynn on one of the tighter parts of the track. Do well to overtake through here. There is Sean Wynn right behind Anthony O'Carroll through Mackney. Billy Brennan continues to increase his lead. Oh, now then, third place could be very much in question as Ryan Whitehall looks to go past Keelan Ryan, and he has. And he's slow in time for the turn, he should do. So a new third place. Oh, and a rider down. And that's at the top of Brayside, and that's John Cahill. Flags are out, red flag is out immediately, and no surprise, really. It is a little accident hotspot, the exit of that turn. So John Cahill seems to be OK. He's up, walking away. So here we go again. Will anything change this time? Well, a much better start this time from Paul Swords. He and Vinnie Brennan side by side, although Brennan does have the inside going into the turn. And I think he might have to yield. Yes, he does. So Paul Swords will lead them into Gorton this time, or will he? Billy Brennan gets it absolutely nailed. Gets around the corner, gets on the, the gas, and he leads from Paul Swords. Second wave is on the road. Sean Wynn again providing the pictures. Darren Hughes, who leads them once again. Brennan from Paul Swords, from Keelan Ryan, from Ryan Whitehall, from Liam Trainer. It's as you were before the red flag. So normal service has been resumed. Use race distance, of course. Aaron Hughes just ahead of Anthony O'Carroll. Then it's Michael Garhan just ahead of Sean Wynn. They're coming up to complete lap one of this restarted race. Around a second, maybe less, between Brennan and Swords. We'll find out when they break the timing beam. Through the dust, but down after John Cahill's accident. So here they come, Vinnie Brennan across the line in first place. Just six tenths between himself and Paul Swords. Elon Ryan, less than a second back in third place. And less than a second back in fourth is Ryan Whitehall. That's the gap between those riders, is through. I was going to suggest perhaps Paul Swords with a big move on Vinnie Brennan. It would have been a big move to go through. But Vinnie Brennan stuck to his line and he continues to lead.
Paul Saw's really on the gas, front wheel lifting. And it's almost a repeat of uh, last time at Macney, or certainly before the restart. Again, Vinny Brennan with both wheels in the air. Oh, Paul Saw's just out of his seat. That will have cost him a few tenths of a second. And he's dropped back a little bit to Keelan Ryan, who's closing right up. So here they go to cross the line for lap number two. And Vinnie Brennan with a 132.7. That will be the fastest lap of the race so far, of course. 1.2 seconds ahead of Paul Swords, who was half a second ahead of Keelan Ryan, who was a second ahead of Ryan Whitehall. Second wave interview. Aaron Hughes is up in two, sixth place still. Just ahead of first wave riders James Ford and John O'Donovan and Kelly Carruthers on the timing leaderboard. Vinny Brennan just pulling away. Meanwhile, Keelan Ryan thinking very much about Paul Sword's second place. Dawn win in 11th at the end of lap two. Billy Brennan bouncing his way down the road, and that gap is even bigger this time. Pulled out another second on Paul Swords, 2.2 seconds. Meanwhile, what's going on further back? Ryan Whitehall with a move on Keelan Ryan, perhaps. No, Keelan Ryan holds on to third place. Oh dear, oh dear, Paul Swords with an issue on Gorton. Aaron Hughes. Back in sixth place again at the end of lap three. Riding with Sean Wynn. Down towards Gordon, just leaves the... Oh, he's just passed. Oh, and that's just too much for triple two. That's Michael Gahan. Benny Brennan on his way to victory, it would appear. Your win. That would be a big move. It is a big move at Macney. He goes through on bike 107, Anthony O'Carroll. So Vinnie Brennan on his way, but the battle for second place rages on between Swords, Whitehall and Ryan. It should be Swords from Whitehall, from Ryan. Oh, it's all getting a little bit messy. Whitehall held up by Swords, perhaps. Billy Brennan with a victory wheelie, past the checkered flag. And it is Paul Swords, just from Ryan Whitehall, with Keelan Ryan missing out on a podium spot in fourth position. This is how they finish then. Billy Brennan with the victory. 3.3 seconds ahead of Paul Swords, Ryan Whitehall, Keelan Ryan, Liam Trainer, and Aaron Hughes from Wave B in sixth place. Coming up next. It's the Superbikes. Welcome back to Cookstown for the only road racing to take place in Northern Ireland this year. Next, it's the open race. Plenty of depth and strength in the field. Let's hear from some of the top names. Good close racing is what everyone wants to see, you know, the crowds, everyone at home, you know, they want to see close racing and, and to be honest, from a rider's point of view, you don't want to clear off in front. You get much, a lot more satisfaction uh, when you're ding-donging and passing and at each other, you know. I've had some great races here with the likes of Derek McGee, who wasn't here this year, but um, I'm sure it'll be tight. This event's uh, you know, it's a bit of fun more than anything else. and getting the bikes out and getting the McAdoo team out racing again. So yeah, just treating it as a bit of fun and, and really enjoy the event again and, and uh, hopefully get back to a full season of road racing in 2021. Feeling very optimistic this weekend is Michael Sweeney. Hopefully this will keep everything, everybody interested, other clubs interested and uh, we get a big crowd in here and then everything will kick off hopefully for next year and they get the same again to keep the small roads Keep them going, like.
Let's crack on with the action then. Time for the riders to line up on the grid for the open race. Derek Shields has the prized pole position for the first superbike race. Alongside him, Thomas Maxwell and Michael Sweeney. It's also a meaty looking row two as well. Paul Jordan, Adam McLean and Neil Kernahan. And it's the up and coming rider, Mike Brown, at the head of row three. Here we go then, folks. Michael Sweeney. Well, I thought he was about to get going. Just about misjudged it. It's Shields who leads them down to Gorton for the very first time. Maxwell in second position. Sweeney looks to go to the inside, but it will be Shields from Maxwell. McLean might sneak third place. Has a look at Sweeney. Has his nose swiped off and has to settle the fourth. So the big bikes are on their way. Second wave. 59, Daryl Tweed, just ahead of Stephen McKnight. Shields from Maxwell from Sweeney. We're oh, my goodness! Down goes Adam McLean. Thankfully, it's a soft one. But that could be a red flag. They've carried on for the moment. I think the crowd will be wondering where the rest of the field are once the front three went through. This is on board with McLean just as he gets it on to the power. The back just spins away from him. It is a red flag. Adam McLean should be OK. He's getting a lift back. It wasn't a hard impact, but it was an impact nonetheless. So no Adam McLean for the restart. Away we go again. Paul Jordan goes up alongside and Jordan from row two takes advantage of the gap that was left by McLean or does he? He could be up in the third ahead of Sweeney and Sweeney gets in there oh they're all a bit too hot going in or not all of them but the two or three of them next wave away Dean McKnight better start from him this time he gets ahead of Daryl Tweed so here they come Shields with a little gap already from Maxwell. Jordan just about hanging on to the front three. That's who we ride with. They're coming down to complete the opening lap. Oh, there's a machine coming down the road. Is that Stephen McKnight? I think that's McKnight's bike. And I think we're going to have another red flag. So here they come to complete this lap. But I think the red flag will come out very, very soon. Indeed it has. So the good news is Stephen McKnight seems to be OK. So we're going to have a third restart. And McLean is back this time. So, third time lucky. Five laps the race distance. Reduced from nine, and away they go. And Paul Jordan with a cracking start. Or it certainly looked to be, but again, he's been shuffled back in the fourth place. It looked like he might even sneak ahead for second. Oh, he's going the other way this time. He'll be third at least, I think. Into Gorton they go. Next wave away, minus Stephen McKnight. So let's have a look again, this time from Mike Brown. Adam McLean possibly suffering a little bit. Maybe he took a bang or maybe just a confidence thing. Plus, of course, they have to factor in the second wave of riders as Thomas Maxwell puts it on the front wheel over the jump. Greeny with the race leader ahead of him. Derek Shields, there were question marks about whether he would be here this weekend, but he is here, a late entry for the Cookstown 100. Michael Sweeney looking very keen behind Derek Shields. And I think we could be about to see a move from Sweeney. He's looking to draw up alongside. Now, has he got the power? Not quite. And I don't think he's going to outbreak his rival into Gordon. Just four hundredths of a second between them across the line at the end of lap one. Then a second and a half back to Paul Jordan. Eight tenths then back to Thomas Maxwell. Adam McLean in fifth. Neil Kernahan sixth. And Mike Brown seventh. It looks to be a Shields-Sweeney battle. Oh, dear, oh, dear. That's uh, Cleary, 139, not getting it quite right. Oh, Paul Jordan has overshot it at Mackney. Any hope he had 
of getting a result has just gone. Oh dear, oh dear. This is the moment. He must just miss his breaking point. Yeah, he just decides he's not going to make it in time. So this is what I was talking about. Sweeney needs to be as close as he can be to the rear of Derek Shields and then get the speed out of this turn here and then try and power his way past. That's what he's trying to do, but that gap remains. In fact, it looks a little bit bigger this time. Indeed, it is two tenths of a second. So Shields has gained another tenth. Here's the battle for fourth. McLean just ahead of Kernahan. Surprisingly, they're all slightly slower on that lap than they were on lap two. So Sweeney having to think about where he can make a move on Derek Shields. All very tight through this section. This is coming down to Macney. This is where Paul Jordan overshot. But no problem for Shields or Sweeney. A tricky little kind of double right-hander. No problems for McLean this time. Paul Jordan, meanwhile, was 13th at the end of lap two. He's now up to ninth. We'll have to wait to the end of lap four to see how much progression he's made. So here they come again, and that gap's bigger this time between Shields and Sweeney. So Derek Shields very much in command of this race, even though it's not the biggest of gaps. Meanwhile, Paul Jordan looking to make up another position. Which he does. So half a second going into this last lap between Derek Shields and Michael Sweeney. Then it's six seconds back to Thomas Maxwell. Then a further 3.7 seconds back to Adam McLean. You have to wonder whether Adam McLean is feeling the effect of that spill he had earlier. Maybe just nursing the bike a little bit more than he would be. But it's looking good for Derek Shields. He has the fastest lap of the race so far. That was on lap two. We're on lap five of five. Paul Jordan up to at least eighth position. And I can't see where Michael Sweeney's going to recover this from. Derek Shields very much in command. It's for him to throw away now. Oh, that's, that's a couple of seconds. That's around two seconds between them. Thomas Maxwell should take a good third place. He's got a good gap over Adam McLean in fourth. Adam McLean still got Neil Kernahan right on his rear, by the way. Then Mike Brown back in sixth position. But here they come. This is the man in second, Michael Sweeney. It's Derry Shields we'll be keeping an eye on going across the line to take the checkered flag. Here he is, that front wheel. Will it go up in the air? No, not just yet. But he takes the win. And the fastest lap of the race on the last lap for Derek Shields. 2.1 seconds, the difference back to Michael Sweeney. So victory then on the superbike for Derek Shields. This is how it all shaped out. With Paul Jordan recovering for a seventh place finish behind Mike Brown. Neil Kernahan fifth, Adam McLean fourth, Thomas Maxwell third, Michael Sweeney second, and Derek Shields in first. It was a good race, you know. Um it's dry for now anyway but uh, you know sort of got away at the front and fair play to Mikko like that was a fair old pace I was watching the lap times and the dash and he was hanging on in there you know so um, that was a good enjoyable race dry conditions you know bit of road racing what more can you ask for Derry Shield still king of the superbikes at Cookstown however the weather played its part and it meant that no feature race would take place However, it was good to have road racing on the streets of Northern Ireland once more. Let's hope we have plenty of the same in 2021. But it's goodbye for now.